Okay. Yep. So I'll pop that. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against, <coughs> carry. <coughs> and I'll just ask, um, I'll invite the chairperson, Iris Donoghue, and her team to give us five minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, councillors, for having us here to present to you again our very unique pathway. We would also like to acknowledge the Mayor and his very muddy feet at the planting on Saturday with his million yeah. trees. So thank you all for your support in the past. We also would like to acknowledge the Faux Local Board and the Henderson Massey Local Board for their support. And I have sitting on my left Derek Battersby from the Faux Local Board and on my right, who will answer any of your very tricky questions, I'm sure they might be, will be uh, Jackie Bird, our project manager. What I'm really here for, and I'll make it short and sweet, is to actually present to you the very unique project, the <coughs> Tafo pathway. And we're very, very keen to get this into the long-term plan in the 2018 to 2028 period. But really, I want to stress the uniqueness of our pathway and we want to thank Auckland Council, staff and Auckland Transport for the input that we've had over the last three or four years because this is an ongoing project. We request that the committee support the inclusion of funding for the pathway in the 2021, 2018 <coughs> to 2028 long-term plan. There are many reasons for this request. The project is unique in Auckland as it is the only cycleway pathway project that is being delivered as a community council partnership. As such, there is an opportunity to extract external funding which minimises the cost for the council. And we're talking specifically, in this case, about the local licensing trust and NZTA, which is a considerable amount of funding, like 53%. Another unique feature is that it will be the only pathway in Auckland connecting the Waitamata and the Manukau harbours along a river. And I have to say at this point that I really support the previous speakers, the Manukau Harbour Restoration uh, Group, and that we would love to work with them on the section where our pathway actually connects to the Manukau. To date, the Trust has secured 1.5 million to build three kilometres of pathways. This investment will be lost if the pathways are not connected, so it's the connection funding that we're seeking. Right. This year, we're planning to spend over half a million building a pontoon at Archibald Park and more pathways in council parks. It's important to build the pontoon at Archibald Park. Currently, the school children in Kelston travel to Takapuna to practise their waka armour. So it's really important to keep the local children in the local area without having to travel great distances. Feedback and current use of the pathway indicates a high degree of support for the pathway from the community and the expectation that it will be completed. A tourism is also considered to be a very valuable asset for Auckland and we believe that this could be a great tourism attraction, cycling from harbour to harbour. The pathway will join the new busway at State Highway 16 at Te Aratu and connects the New Lynn Avondale to Waterview connection, so allows a tremendous number of users to avoid the main roads. Committing to funding to obtain the NZTA funding, quite literally we've been staging this over the past four years, so this can continue gradually over the next four or five years. We're not asking you to stump up with a whole heap of money in one lump sum, we really want to stage this strategically so that it can be completed maybe in the next four to five years. Water quality, as I mentioned with the Manuka Harbour Trust, is also a great part of the project, as is the environment. So I believe that we have touched on every subject we could possibly touch on for the continuation of this project, and we ask for your support and any questions. Thank you. Okay. There may be a couple of questions, and then we'll go straight into the item. Any questions? Councillor Simpson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this project isn't your, to, to Derek, if I may, Madam Chair, yep. this project isn't your local board priority project for the LTP, though, is no, it? No, it's not. So... 
you're asking. We, we, uh, the Faux Local Board is just a contributor to part of the TFO pathway in its <coughs> board area. Right. <coughs> so we're supporting the project overall, but it's not, as you have correctly stated, it's not our key. Okay. Great, thanks, thank you. Thanks. Could I just address that too, that they have actually committed 40% of their funding? 300k, yeah, yeah. Yes, right. so that's no. still a huge commitment. I, I saw that, I was just sort of trying to get it in my head from the LTP perspective, that's all. That's fine. Yeah. Big question, and remembering it covers a couple of boards. Member Wilcox. Yeah, um, he kaupapa ara kakiki ki tēne? Kaupapa ara kakariki tēne? Is this a, um, a, a, a green... Yeah. Um, Kaupapa, um, ways. Green pathways. Purpose, um, green ways. Green ways. Greenway yeah. project. Oh, green. Yeah. Uh, it's a great I scheme. could perhaps answer it's that tonight, Quay. The, um, Tafo pathway has been mentioned in the Fo and Henderson Massey local board plans, and it is a green way for the Fo local board. And, um, we have worked, we're working on also greening the pathway along the route. So we have planted 7,000 plants last year, 10,000 this year. And so we're looking at the larger um, health of the waterway as well as building the pathway. Any other questions? Councillor Filipaina. Just, just one question now. You mentioned um, the, 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 the money from the region. How much? Is the request or ask? The total cost of the pathway is 66 million. Yeah, I, I, that's the total, but how much are you looking from the region? I mean, you've got the commitment from the two local boards, you've got the commitment for the $5 million, uh, you lose the 1.5 million if, if, it's, if it's not connected. So, so what, what is the request of the region monies, whether it be, is, is that 66? No, we're looking no, probably so for right. ten million so, yeah. over the next four to five years. <coughs> so we could so stage if we stage the project it's probably better to look to yes. smaller amounts of money and to build different stages in, as we go. Stage two is one of our highest priorities at the moment that would connect Newland and Avondale up the Faux River to up to Great North Road. And the cost um, estimate for that stage is, is fifteen million. So if we could get um, some funding from the LTP, we are in a much better position then to get um, about 53% subsidised from the NZTA. Okay, so it's about seven and a half for the next, this is what I'm trying to get in my head. Yep. I've got so 66 million. I might, I might just get Dean to yeah. comment, but remember that's an LTP discussion. Mm. Yeah, no, no, I, I understand. Is, yeah. Uh, so it's a... Uh, we will be talking about the funding and what the current recommendation is uh, when we talk to the paper specifically, okay. and that'll address sources of funding, cool. what the current request is in the context of yeah. a long-term oh, development I'll, plan I'll for the for walkway. So, so I suspect we, my, my, my advice is wait till the paper. Yeah, cool. Let's talk it through in, in a proper ordered sequence. If you're okay. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm fine okay. with that. Just wanted to. All right. So Thanks. this is just questions for Iris and the trust. Cool. Any Good. other yeah. questions, yeah. Councillor Hills? Oh, it's. Um, thank you, Chair. It's probably an LTP discussion. I just was wondering um, the plan for renewal and operating costs. Okay, you, that's I probably think, yeah. So let's let's wait thank for the you. paper. We're going to go Sorry. straight into the paper. Okay, so that's all the questions for the trust. Thank you, Derek and Iris. If you'd like to, yep. thank you for the time. And Jackie, are you going to talk to uh, the paper and Mace? Thank you. I'm here to answer any questions that the yeah. any of the councillors may have yeah. from the paper. Did you want to say anything to take a Did you want to add anything, Mace? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, just, just quickly, this has been a, a project that is, has a reasonable gestation, as you will see. Um, I think the important part of the project is the passionate um, engagement and really practical engagement of the, tr of the trust in supporting it and leveraging community investment um, into it. I think the other point to make is the connection of 30 parks and open spaces um, providing for active recreation for local communities and opening up the, uh, the Faux River is an important part of the, uh, the project as well as active transport in terms of leveraging the investment from others. 
Okay. So let's just, in answer to the questions from Councillor Philip Baina, the recommendations here is we note the, the report, but we also endorse the progression to detailed design and resource consent, which is currently funded. There's funding to do that. And then the request is that we pick up um, in the LTP the longer term funding of this, given that if we commit some funding, this then allows it to access NZTA funding as part yeah. of that big New Zealand cycleway um, fund that so, is substantial. So, Chair, that, and, 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 and that's exactly where my head needs to go. Yep. It is, is around <laughs> not missing out on the funding that will be available from outside parties, NZTA, everything else. But I still wanted to find out how much our, our, our input or the monies over the 10 year and the LTP period. I mean, four to five years we've got this, that's all. So, yeah. So can tell me, just give me those figures, please. Yeah, thank you. So I think, um, like I said before, stage two is our highest priority, um, <coughs> connecting those two parks. We've um, already built the path in Kenwater Park and we'll be continuing that through Rizal Reserve today. So stage mm. two is the cost estimate for that is $15 million and if we could stage that over the next few years that would be a fantastic step in the right direction. Stage two, 15, 15 and I know million. the whole project 66. 66. So when we get into stage three and, and, and I'm looking at the whole 10 years, Mace, because that's the discussion we'll be having. Is, is the next 18 to 28. Through the LTP, yes. Through the That's LTP. Right. That's right. So we've got the initial three to four years, and then we've got the next part. Mm -hmm. so I think the important thing is, is as we um, look at the priorities across the Auckland Paths program, uh, which is funded from development contributions, just where this, this pathway and stages of this pathway fit within the priorities um, across, across the region as, as well. So that's that's the funding envelope. So uh, yeah, what we what we'll be asking for through the LTP is um, supporting at least fifteen million dollars, so we can unlock um, the other the other partners in this project, including the trust. Okay, I, yeah. I, I haven't got the full one, but no, yeah. sorry. Yeah. So we're just council. Dean's oh, just reminding that. me. So Auckland Transport Council. NZTA, so let's be really trust. clear on and the split the of funding. And private, you know, philanthropic. Yeah. And so, clearer? No, but did, I'll, I'll talk to Mace. Um, oh. So may, maybe at this stage the report is seeking uh, approval to do uh, some detailed design and a business case. And resource consent. And, and that's funded, okay? Out of that I would expect greater certainty around sources of funding and, and we know that sources of funding include Auckland Transport, Auckland Council, uh, the Trust uh, and, and or other philanthropic entities and the timing of that funding. Okay, you've got an indication for stage two but we will, as a result of that detailed business case, you will have greater clarity and that will also inform the long term plan uh, for Council's contribution but also Auckland Transport's contribution both of which are needed if you're going to secure NZTA funding. So there's a bit more work to be done to give the clarity on the question that you've asked, That's Councillor yeah. Filipina. Yeah. And certainly, um, uh, Councillor Hill's asked a similar question around um, um, maintenance and, um, and that consequential OPEX, and that would be resolved in the detailed business case too, because you've got an asset that Auckland Transport would have a key role in managing as part of its um, network uh, and which the parks team uh, would also be contributing to because they will want to, or well, there's an opportunity to introduce further amenity. So I, I think we just need a bit of time to, to deal with that and bring it back to you in the form that you're seeking answers yeah, be for. And just because I think at the end of the day it'll have to come back mm -hmm. when we end up doing the, 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 the long-term plan. So I want to know that in year 2028, if there was any funds that need to go through to Te Whau. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. Uh, and if it is, well then that's a discussion that we will have collectively 
in two that long term. That's all I was asking. Yeah, and, and so, we'll get that and, information. And that come back. We'll Sweet. get you that information in the detailed business case. Thank <clears> you. Oh, that's good. Good questions. Um, Councillor Simpson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, that was really good, Dean, too, because you sort of, I think everyone was just a bit confused by the report. Uh, well, not confused, but it wasn't as simple as it could be. So I just want to ask a question around, um, I think the project's really good, but it's not an LTP discussion. I want to ask a question around the recommendations. You're asking us in B to endorse the progression of detailed design and resource consent. Um, the report states that it's the um, detailed design is already funded, 1.4 million, but it doesn't say the resource consent is funded. Can you please confirm if, the, um, if B is fully funded and there is no extra council, funded, council funding required, whether the um, 1.4 million includes detailed design and resource consent? Thank you for the question. Sorry, it's not clear in the report. Uh, Auckland Transport have provided the funding, the 1.4 million for the detailed design in this financial year, and Auckland Council growth funding is supporting the um, resource consent, so we do have funding for both, both pieces of work. Right, that's actually not in the report. Sorry about that. Mm. No, it's mm. good to clarify, because it isn't necessarily completely clear. <coughs> Councillor Walker. Sure, does the, um, does the modelling that's referred to here take any kind of scenario-based approach. And the reason I ask that is 340,000 pedestrians and cyclists seems to be a, a very small uh, number, uh, particularly given the massive shift to cycling that we're seeing currently and in overseas cities, the growth of e-bikes and, and the like and the catchment that this path sits within. Yeah, thank you. The um, modelling was done by Flo, who do the modelling for all of uh, Auckland Transport's cycle network. Um, but because we don't have a connected network, it, it is modelling, it's, we don't have any actual numbers, but they have um, provided that, and you're quite correct, when a network effect starts happening, um, as has been seen in Upper Queen Street, etc., when we have a really well-connected cycle network, then we do get more numbers. So I would say that that is a conservative number, but um, that's the... That's the figures that we used for um, our cost-benefit um, analysis. Thank you, Councillor Walker. Um, Mayor Goff. Uh, thank you very, very much, Madam Chair. And <clears throat> I, I've been down to this pathway a couple of times. I think it's, it's really good, and I see the BCR is 2.2, and that's, that's really positive. Um, I just, uh, and you may not be, uh, you, you partially, or Dean partially answered the, the question before. But just a clarification about a couple of things. For stage two, because we, we do it one bite at a time, and I think that's what uh, people expect, the 15 million, is that 15 million from Auckland Council and AT together, or is it 15 million only from Auckland Council? My understanding is that Auckland Transport doesn't have, hasn't committed funds at this stage, so we're looking for 15 million from Auckland Council. Okay. And... Taking on board that you know we're looking in the the, the uh, detailed design and resource consent process in the business case for certainty and timing of funding, um, can you give us? I mean, this presumably does meet the NZTA criteria. What uh, are you able to speculate on the <coughs> the likelihood of this project succeeding in getting matching funding? Because obviously, if we can get a dollar for each dollar we invest, that, Im that increases the economic attractiveness of funding this particular project. Well, we think it's got a really strong fit. Um, and as you said, the best benefit cost ratio is, is good as well. I mean, it ticks all the strategic boxes from NZTA, the Auckland plan. It ticks um, your vision <coughs> and intent for the LTP, um, the phone local um, Henderson Massey local board plans. Um, we think it's got a really strong, um, a good chance of getting the NZTA funding. Okay, and that's on a dollar for dollar basis. Fifty-three percent. Slightly a dollar and three basis. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, <laughs> Member Wilcox. Just another uh, question about the, um, related to the finance. 
Um, 25 people didn't um, agree. Um, can you expand a bit more on that? Kia ora. We had a, an extensive consultation period uh, when we carried out the scheme assessment report and over 383 people responded and the vast majority did support the project. There are around 25 who said that they don't and they, um, there are some people who live very close right on the river and the boardwalk would be um, a visual impact on, on their otherwise uninterrupted view that they have had. Um, and so we do understand their reluctance to have the boardwalk there. We believe that the um, benefit to the wider community is, is, is way, way stronger, although we, of course we respect their, their um, position and we'll work with anyone, um, of course, through the resource consent to, um, process to work out how we can minimise and mitigate the effects of the pathway on anyone who objects to it. Um, ahakoa tēnā, pēhe ka whakatau i a rātou. Nā te mea e mōhi ana au, mehe me ka hare ki te kōti, te nui o te utu ki a whakatau i a rātou. Um, in, in spite of that, um, we know that um, you know this, this has the potential to go to the court. Um, how are you going to um, um, decide, decide on this or make a decision with them? Thank you. We are hoping we are, we are intending to have a publicly notified resource consent process so that we can draw out all the issues um, that the community have around the pathway. I hope that answers your question. Are you still talking with them or having discussions with them? Um, absolutely. We haven't been in, in touch lately, but we um, have just sent them back a report that um, covers all the consultation material that we got back and how we responded and uh, took on their information and their feedback and how we um, responded to that in the scheme assessment report. We've just sent that out in the last week. Okay. Look, Councillor Hills, Casey, Darby and Councillor Simpson again and then we might need to move to the recommendations. Councillor Hills. Uh, kia ora. I, this is fantastic. Uh, project and yeah, the BCR and everything shows up and I love the creativeness of getting funding for the capital works. I just want to know um, what is the process for getting some operational funding and also future renewals? Do we get half back from NZTA? What do we, what does it look like? Is it treated just like we're treated our, our roading projects as this is a significant um, walking and cycling project as well? So do we know? Thank you. We are... Uh, the, the asset would come to Auckland Council, um, so we would be responsible for the um, ongoing maintenance and um, renewal of the project. We are looking at using a product called FRP, which is a um, fibre reinforced polymer. It has an extremely long life um, span. They're saying 50 to 100 years. It's been used extensively in Australia because what we are looking at is the whole of life cost of the project. It's definitely um, part of our consideration. So we're looking for a product and a um, an infrastructure that has really low maintenance costs and is um, uh, easy for us to maintain long term. Thank you. Yeah. Councillor Hills, we've just been having a quick little chat. I think we need to move through some of the practical discussions around renewals, etc. So, yeah. Uh, I, I, only to say that um, <coughs> if it qualifies for NZTA funding and uh, if it's considered uh, alongside Auckland Transport's other assets, then it would also qualify for um, funding from NZTA over its uh, operating life That's what as I thought, well. Yeah. So we just, I think, um, so that we can just unpack this and come back to you with proper advice around capital and consequential OPEX implications, we'll address that in the detailed business case and the sources of funding. Um, so that's a piece of work that uh, you know, we've agreed to do, and we'll get to you so it can inform the LTP debate. No, that's fine. It's just for, for me, it's yeah. obviously one figure here, but there's a long-term consequence. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Councillor Casey. Well, I have two questions. Um, Mace, you could probably answer the first one. Just to clarify for me the difference between a shared path and a pathway. So this will be a shared pathway, account. Um, so it's the same? It's just the different same. Names. It's the that's same right. in this circumstance. It's the same. <laughs> right. yeah, this is just so, a name. So yeah. that's good. Yeah. That's what the answer I wanted to hear. The second one was, within the pathway, and according to the report, 
<coughs> there are bits that will be, quote, express metro route and local connectors. Can you tell me how, what that means? What's an, an express metro route? Mm -hmm. Is that for fast bikes to? getting to work? <laughs> Correct, Councillor Casey. Uh, we're, we're building the, and designed the pathway to suit both requirements. We want this to be an express metro route so that it is a commuter route for people um, in West Auckland often coming into the centre of city or you know, from Chiara to New Lynn, for example. Um, but it is also an, a local connector because there's a lot of cut-off communities. Well, they're not, you know, they, they can't connect along the river. They all have to go up to the very busy main road, Tiatatu Road and Great North Road, etc. So it's going to be an extremely useful local connector for school children, etc., to get around their local community. So it'll, it'll serve both purposes. It'll also be a, a potential tourist route as well. So we think there's a wide variety of users for the pathway. Thank you. My second, I've got a second question and a, and a wee comment at the end. My, my second question um, was also noted by Councillor Walker, and that is that I think this report was written before the wonderful Waterview shared path was opened, and so it would be a forecast by flow as opposed to the hundreds of bikes and walkers that are now on the <coughs> Waterview shared path. Hmm. Yeah, that's correct. It will connect to that as well. Um, where there's a proposed cycleway from New Lynn to Avondale along the railway line. But I think and your figures are way too low sure. from Thank my you. experience. And my comment is simply, living on the four side of Mount Albert, I think this is a wonderful regional project and I use the Four River a lot. Not for cycling, but for dog walking. And it's just, a, it'll be a wonderful, it's, it's like... It's like it's Jackie. It'll be a, dog for you. It'll be a wonderful um, regional resource. Fully supported. Thank you. Councillor Darby. Thank you. Thanks, team. And the, the numbers of users, that's based on the busiest section, isn't it? It's not on the whole of the pathway. So there's, and we know that most journeys are short journeys, particularly walking journeys. So that is your base number that you're working your business case off. Is that, that correct? That is correct. Okay. So I think that it could be considerably higher, which is what others are saying here too. Hey, just something like, I want to know, how does this sync with, we've had a presentation at the Planning Committee workshop on the um, Auckland Transport Investment Programme, or the proposed investment programme for 18 to 28, which does specifically identify shared paths in that mix. How does it fit with that proposed investment programme? Thank you. My understanding is that um, it's not part of Auckland Transport current priority section uh, because they're trying to look at the cycleways a little bit closer to town but they still want to fund this project so at this stage we're not quite sure how it's going to work but they may want to work on the uh, inner city paths first. Okay so that's still a proposed body of work and it's not landed it's just indicative so it doesn't fit but what it could fit. I'm, I, really I think it's in their second second ring of priority. I think it's not quite their first ring of priority. I think they're wanting to focus on the inner city, inner city cycle waves. Okay, <coughs> we'll, we'll see that soon. The <laughs> other thing, I noticed you referenced that it's part of the Auckland Cycle Network. I've looked at the Auckland Cycle Network plan and I can't see it on that plan. Is that, are you sure it's part of the Auckland Cycle <coughs> Network? Because that plan, I've got it right in front of me, doesn't show this route. Okay, that well, it wasn't initially, and but it has been added is my understanding, but I'll double check that um, with my colleagues at Auckland Transport, but my understanding is that that happened last year sometime, so I might have to follow up on that, thank you. Okay, thank you. Hmm. Thank you Councillor Darby, and finally Councillor Simpson. Thank you for allowing me another question, sorry. I So I'm just, this if, if this doesn't get put into the LTP, right? I mean, because it could, it couldn't. You know, let's hope it does, but if it doesn't. Um, how long are we holding the resource consent for? Um, I'll be applying this year for the resource consent, as I said, and we'll be looking for a 10-year resource ten consent. Year. Right, yeah. right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, no other questions. We've got the recommendations. Do we have a mover for the recommendations? Magoff and Councillor Philip Bainer. I think we've, we may have talked ourselves out. Oh, Councillor Darby? Look, I'm um, a bit of a cycle enthusiast around this table, I'm, and there's a growing number of us, I think. But, um, Madam Chair, I just want to highlight the incredible number of people coming to cycling infrastructure when we build safe, quality infrastructure that's in the right place, that connects communities, centres, schools, train stations. Um, 
in 16, we saw the equivalent of a full mount smart. If you could imagine <coughs> going to the Adele concert and looking around there, or not a Warriors game, because you wouldn't find it that full. Hey, 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 hey. don't um, knock the boys, don't knock the boys. But if you can imagine that stadium full of people, that's how many people we added to cycling in 2016. A full Mount Smart Stadium, full of Aucklanders who weren't cycling. In 16, they came to cycling. And that number is growing and growing and growing. We're on the, the crest of a wave, but that wave is only getting higher and more adjoining it. Um, we saw a 44% increase just on the Northwest Cycleway. Uh, tremendous numbers coming into the city centre. Um, and um, I'm a user of the Key Street Cycleway, even though I only ride about 300 metres of it from the ferry and going up over the Hobson Street flyover. But since January 1, um, just under, and it'll probably crack the number 200,000 cyclists, excluding pedestrians, just cyclists on the Key Street Cycleway, which we only put in about 18 months ago. Uh, 200,000 cyclists will probably hit that number the week after next, and you can see it on the counter there. Uh, there's a phenomenal number of people coming to cycling, and this is just another one of many that we'll see through the LTP <coughs> considerations um, that I think uh, we will be obliged to um, um, confirm budget for. It is a good story for Auckland. Thank you, Councillor Darby. I wasn't going to say anything because I feel a bit conflicted as a daily cyclist. I don't want to push this one too hard. Um, but I'm very delighted to hear you say, and perhaps you could pick this up and as part of your committee, the fact that the focus on short-term round-town cycling is possibly a little bit short-sighted and the focus on the 15k <laughs> um, circle of cycling into town is probably where a far more useful focus might be. Councillor Filipina? Would you like to speak to this? Yeah, look, chair, chair, as, you, as you can see, I, I'm, I'm definitely not a cyclist, uh, nor am I a walker. <laughs> However, um, I, I, I picked up on what Iris said, and, and, and I support uh, this moving forward to our discussion on, uh, around the LTP. But Iris mentioned one thing that, that really got me, and that was around the pontoon. And, and the fact that, that, that with the community and the young ones staying in the particular area with Wakaama, I mean, that, that was one of the things. Now, Cathy also said one thing again that, that I, I look forward to the conversation. That was the regional sort of um, the prioritisation, the project, <coughs> um, Mace, that, that you mentioned. This is why I, I've seconded it, and, and it, I just, you know, it, it, having a look at that, having the, the, the priority from a regional perspective, and, and just having that discussion. But that's, yeah, Iris, that, that, that one there really got me. Uh, in regards to keeping the kids there, the, 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 the community there. And, and let's not forget, it's a shared path. I mean, you look, look at you know, cycling and, and everything else, but it's a shared path. And, and it's, it, it's really for the community there that will connect our region. So, you know, that's, that's why I, I, at this stage, let's move it forward for the discussion. So, thank you, Chair. Thank you, thank you. Right, let's put that. I'll put that. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against. <coughs> Carried. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Jackie and Mace. Appreciate that. And thank you to Iris and Derek for coming in. Appreciate your time. So we move back to...